Good morning, everybody. Um, I am redoing the P Ricotta base, P base today because the old video is when I very first learned to make it and it was a, kind of a different recipe. I think it was the same, but different. So I'm redoing it so you guys can see exactly what I do. I do this every week, once a week. Um, and usually one batch is enough. This week I'm going to have to actually make a second batch because I'm making some vegan lasagna and I'm making some, um, something else that's coming up, uh, because my kids are coming to visit. So I will be making a second batch, but this is exactly what I do to make the first batch every week. Okay. All right. Hang on. Okay. So you have to have, a, oop, that is my half cup of vinegar, white vinegar I'm pouring all over. You have to have a whole container of this and this is 48 ounces I use the whole thing it's gonna go into this pot that's already been heating up let's see if I can I, I can't do it so hang on a second all right awful blurry there there we go okay so the, the whole thing just went in there I'm going to wait until it gets up to I've got a thermometer here I'm gonna wait until it gets up to about 165 degrees and when it does I'm going to dump this whole half cup of white vinegar in there because throughout my time of learning to do this let me switch you okay so when I first started doing this all the recipes I saw called for a quarter cup of lemon juice a quarter cup of um vinegar whatever you're going to use well I started out using a quarter cup but that was not enough you guys it because I would I would lose so much of my um the way I mean, we're just going to call it, call it curds and whey, right? You want as many curds as you can make, okay? You want the water that comes out when you're straining it to be clear or kind of a, kind of a, kind of a murky clear, but you don't want it to be white milky. And mine was always white milky. So I knew I was losing a lot of my curds and I didn't get even nearly as much as I do now. You're going to be shocked when you see how many curds I get and, and how it separates beautifully and leaves just the water. Okay, so that's going to get heated up. Then I'm going to add my vinegar, stir it up, and I'll show you all that when it happens. All right, I'll be back. Okay, we're at our 160. Actually, we're a little bit above it, which is fine. So in goes our half cup of white vinegar. Just dump it in there. Give it a nice stir. Turn off the heat. Put a lid on it. Take it off the heat. And that's where it's going to stay, guys, until I get ready to strain it out. And I will show you that when it's time. Okay, guys, I'm getting ready to strain the milk. It's been sitting here for about two hours and it's pretty cooled off. This is my straining um, setup. So I have that and then this goes on the top of it. I got this at a thrift store one day and I thought, man, that would be perfect for making my pea base that I make so often. Okay, and then I usually, I like muslin. I like the... I just like it, so I usually strain with muslin in the strainer, and I buy my muslin in these great big huge pieces that last me two to three years. I'm, I'm not kidding. So basically all I'm going to do is see how, okay look at this, look how nice and thick this is, and see how clear that, that little spot of liquid is right there, that watery spot. When I get done straining it, all that clear, clear liquid will be out, and I will have a oops, pan full. Of this stuff and, and I get a lot of ricotta out of one bottle I'll wait till I show you when, I, when this gets um straining you can just you can be shocked how much I get I'm actually gonna weigh it today I've never done that before but I'm gonna wait and find out exactly how much I get because I get a lot and I, and I look at other people sometimes I think man I get so much more than that uh, we use it a lot though we use it for everything okay let me get off here so I can get this into the strainer and I'll be back in a second Okay, it's all strained, sitting in the cheesecloth, sitting in the strainer, and it's going to stay here all day and all night. I made, I started this at 10 this morning. It's 12.30 right now, 12.30 noon, and I just put it into the strainer. I will leave it sitting on my counter all day and overnight, and then tomorrow is when I will show you guys the last of what it looks like. And this is how, just how I kind of seal up the top of it a little bit with the rubber band on the muzzle, and then I just put this little lid that fits this little setup perfectly. And there we go. Okay, and it's going to just do its thing. Um, I know a lot of people worry about having this sitting for so long. I, I promise it's okay. The, actually, the longer, by using more vinegar the way I do and letting it sit longer, I get a much cleaner taste, I, I guess. It doesn't taste really like the tea, pea milk. It tastes more like 
like a nice soured cultured milk that I can use for sour cream, mayonnaise, um, ranch dips, white cheese sauces, uh, ricotta cheeses. It's, it's endless, the things that I find to do with this stuff. I love it. All right, guys, that's it until it's done straining. It's going to be a while. So I'm checking to see how it's doing. Look at all that nice, clear water that has separated you guys. That means I'm going to have such a good batch. I'm so excited. Let's see how thick enough it is already. Ooh, look at that. It's already forming a nice, getting a nice little form on it and everything. Oh, everything's going good. It's going to be so good. That is a nice batch. All right, good morning, everybody. So this is it. I'm setting up the pea base. As you can see, it's still a little damp. And one of the things I do in the mornings before I put it in this container is I give it a little squeeze, see how there's still liquid coming out, but see how it's nice and clear liquid. There's nothing milky looking. So just give it a little squeeze. I'll probably squeeze it better when I get off, off the camera here in a minute, and then I'll show it to you in the bowl. Okay, so when you get it nice and squeezed out, you're going to have this nice little ball of your ricotta. So you're going to open it up. And you're going to have this perfect little ball of cheese left over. Okay, look how nice and firm that is. And I put mine in a paper towel line bowl because the first day or two that it's in the fridge, it's still going to be weeping a little bit. That's what I call it. A little bit of liquid still going to be coming out. So I just use a paper towel to soak that up. Just pick up my perfect little ball. See that, how nice that is? Put it in my bowl. And you can scrape all this off with like a butter knife or something. Get all the extra off. I don't waste any. But that's it, guys. That's how easy it was. I hope this uh, short little video helps you guys. And I'm back one more time. So I forgot until I brought this in here to edit it that I had told you guys I was getting way, uh, way and see how much of the ricotta we actually had after we got out all the way, right? So it weighed it at 14 ounces, which I was rather pleased with. I mean, at, that was that's pretty good. 14 ounces of actual cheesy base that we can use for stuff, right? The way I would figure out the macros if I was worried about them is there are six servings in a 48 ounce bottle of pea milk and all we take out is the water. When we do this, just the water. So I would go ahead and divide my 14 ounces by six and then I would take the macros off of the... Um, pea bottle for whatever a serving is and I would use those and here's the thing because we use the pea base for things like sour cream and cream cheese and um things like that you know or like a garlic spread or whatever we're not using a whole because one serving if you divide six into 14 it's going to be two ounces and something right nobody's going to eat that much of it unless you make a pudding I do make a pudding that uses about two ounces it's really good um but most of the time you're just going to be eating a spoonful here and a spoonful there so you're, you're getting minimal minimal um calories minimal everything and, and you're got, not getting any carbs yay that was a plus for me um so that's how I would figure out the macros if I was somebody who was tracking my macros and stuff that's how I would do it okay hope that helps all right guys and another thing is I wanted you guys to notice how thick mine was. Did you guys notice that? Right? Okay. All right. 